Okay, hey there. So I was gonna save this video for a bit later, but I just got too excited, yeah, especially given that some of you, some of you in the previous video where I talked about Luxeek as a ROM alternative, I just wanted to make this video really quickly. So yeah, this is gonna be a big picture overview of Luxeek. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Santi and I, I create content particularly on Obsidian, which I believe is one of the best alternatives to Roam and one of the best note-taking apps. Uh, we're gonna be talking about some of that, but why I still think there's a place for LogSeq and particularly my work workflow is more about combining LogSeq with Obsidian than replacing Obsidian or anything like that. But why I think LogSeq is the best Roam alternative, especially if you want some of the Roam features, but we're gonna be discussing that right now. So. In here, I just made a nice little presentation for you in Logseek actually. And the very first thing we're going to be analyzing is what is the problem with Roam? So just by the fact that you're here, I probably know that you agree. And the problem with Roam is mostly that is not cheap, right? And that means that, you know, I still believe that the creators of Rome deserve to be paid as much as they charge. I definitely think it can be worth it for some people. And that is evident because there's a lot of people willing to pay for Rome. So there's definitely, um, you know, a market for it. But people like me and you, especially when we realize that there are these great alternatives and we start questioning whether it's worth paying this much and it would be worth paying if we at least own our notes but that is the other thing our notes are trapped right and what i mean by this is that because it's all stored in the cloud in their cloud servers we don't really own our notes you know when you take notes in rome they are trapped in your account which is technically yours but you don't really get to see your files which is a problem if you're thinking in long term and that's kind of my philosophy when it comes to note taking you should ask the question, am I going to be able to use these, these notes, this piece of content that I'm writing or these, you know, internal journals, whatever you're doing, your reflection, your learning, am I going to be able to access these notes in 50 years, right? And if the answer is no, I think the tool that you're using might not be the best one. And that is kind of like what I, you know, it's kind of a strict rule because to be honest, after making my, my video on Rome, I was really, it was really enticing. I can definitely see why people love Rome. I think it's worth it, but because it has these conflicting beliefs with some of the core philosophies I have about note taking, I'm trying to not succumb to to the <laughs> how seducing Rome really is. So that is one of the main things. So if you're watching this video, you probably agree with at least one of those. Now the next thing is is Obsidian enough? I teach Obsidian, and in case you're new to this channel, I have an online course on Obsidian in case you want to check it out. Obsidian is an amazing tool. And it's great for, you know, knowledge management, for taking your notes. And the question is, is Obsidian enough, right? So my answer would be yes. Obsidian is perfect. It's, well, it's, nothing is perfect, but it's as close as it's, it can be when it comes to taking notes, owning your notes. Obsidian philosophy is all about that. You own your notes and, and you know, they're going to be with you for the next 50 years. Even if Obsidian goes away, the notes are, are in plain text, so in Markdown and you're gonna be having access to them for as long as you want them to. And it's just about having the good habits of backing up and so on. So is the, the question to, is Obsidian enough? Yes and no, right? Why do I say no? Because Obsidian has some limitations, like any application, right? Obsidian has a limitation that is not the best for, you know, in my case, I, I use Notion for task management. I don't think Obsidian is the best for task management, which is why I use Notion, in case you're interested in learning more about that. I have a full video comparing Obsidian to Notion. And yeah, so basically task management, that's one, which is together with uh, project management. And also the other thing is if you really, if you come from Rome or you really like the idea of Rome, you might really like this idea of an outliner, right? And I'm, I'm gonna be showing you in one second how LogSeq can be the perfect solution for you in that case. But an outliner is this very um, effortless process of just writing things down and making a nice outline that you can collapse, you can move things around. Obsidian, even though you could kind of do it, is not the best for that, is not that frictionless when it comes to making a nice outline. And it's definitely not the best for uh, task management, even though it has some features. And I really, really tried to push these boundaries to see if I could move all of my to-do system into Obsidian. I don't think it's currently possible. And again, I'm talking from my experience right now. Obsidian in the future might evolve. 
Uh, Dynalist is, a, is an application done by the same developers of Obsidian. So if that ever integrates with Obsidian in a nice way, that could solve everything and Obsidian could be a, an all-in-one solution for all your needs. But currently, I still think it has those limitations, right? So, so now it's more about Logseek, right? This is what this video is about. So Logseek to me is Rome plus Obsidian equal Logseek. Rome and Obsidian had a baby and now we have Logseek, right? Especially, you know, not so much the functionality of Obsidian, but more about the philosophy behind Obsidian. The idea that you can own your notes and it's all markdown. And I'm going to be showing you that in a second again. But here's the idea. And what I mean by this is that you get the best of Obsidian, which means you own your notes, right? You are the owner of your files, uh, which is a double-sided sword uh, because you, it also makes you responsible for looking after your files and doing backups, which is something I definitely want to explore in future videos. But because you own your notes, it means that you could have access to these notes for the next 50 years, for the next 70 years until your last day, right? And I love that idea. And I think that's why Logseek is uh, particular for me, for my use case, better than Rome in that sense. Now, the other thing with Logseek is that you get the best of the Rome experience. And by this, I mean that, okay, even though it's not the same as Rome, it does replicate a lot of its functionality, but it's not the same application. It's not that trying to replicate every single aspect of it. So there's definitely gonna be some things that are you, if you're used to Rome, uh, you will miss from Rome. But because it has these other ideas of other ways to do things, there's going to be also some added benefits. And particularly the idea of just owning your notes to me just like wins completely. So with that said, I am going to show you actually what Logseek looks like. So right now, if I just press escape out of this, this is a presentation that I just created. This is currently in the browser and I'm going to be showing you the Logseek main page in a second. But this is how it works. It's just a basic outliner tool and you can of course collapse things nicely and this is how I outlined this presentation and it took me like almost nothing to well I mean it's a very simple one but it was so quick to do and then all I had to do is in case this is closed just to make a presentation you just click in this and here you have the presentation and you can go down on the soup points right here and you can press F to make it full screen and here's a presentation so it's really really cool and of course, this, this is slideshow kind of thing is part of another app or another package called GS Reveal, just Reveal, not, not really sure of the name, how to pronounce it. But either way, it's a presentation maker that uses Markdown or HTML to make presentations like this. So it's really cool. So with that, I'm going to show you the main page um, of Logsig, what you see when you first enter. So let me just pause the video for a second. All right. So here it is. When you go to Logsig.com, you can ignore this hashtag. Um, when you go to Logsic.com, you're going to see this main page and it just says, hi, welcome to Logsic. Um, You know, this is important. Logsic is a privacy first open source platform for knowledge sharing and management. So open source, if you're familiar with the concept, is just the idea that the code used to make the application is open for anyone to see so people can manipulate it. Now, apparently there is some, you know, they write a bit more about this so you can read this and research. Uh, but apparently it's not fully uh, open source because there are some things they need to close for privacy issues so that, you know, people don't get hacked and so on. Even though most, well, actually all of your notes are either stored by you in a local folder, meaning in your computer or in a GitHub repository, which we're going to talk about. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I'm definitely going to break it down in other videos in simple terms. But yeah, so not completely open source, um, apparently, but open source in philosophy and most parts of it, of the code, if you're interested in that, is actually open source. So with that said, here we can see that this is a three minute tutorial. It just shows you how you can create this nice little uh, display of ideas and or quotes. And yeah, just a little tutorial explaining how things work. Basically, here's a nice little video as well. And, and yeah, what's really cool is that in here, it prompts you to open a local directory where you can create it. We're going to do that in a second. And yeah, actually, we're going to explore this. We're going to come back to this right now. I just want to show you how you can create your own so that you can start today. And you can do two things. One is login. I recommend with GitHub because that's what you are going to need to be using if you want to log in or you can open. We're going to do this just in case you're curious uh, the way the GitHub login works is just you create a GitHub account or if you already have one, you just log into that 
And then all you have to do is create a new repository, which is a project. It's just a fancy name for a project. Uh, usually this is for programmers. And then you are able to store all your nodes in GitHub. It's really, it's really useful. And if you want to sync across devices, it's probably the best alternative. But it's also a bit advanced. And I only recommend it if you at least have some experience with GitHub. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated. You're not going to want to use LogSeq. So I, I w I'm probably going to make, if you really want to, I might make a video explaining exactly how it works. And But yeah, so right now, I would just advise to create a local folder in your computer, which you can put in Dropbox or any syncing tool that you prefer. So I'm just going to show you that really quick. So in here, you have two options. You can either scroll down and click in here, which is going to open your notes, or you can just click on open. Right here, I have I have this one open, uh, which in my case is just in Dropbox. And you can just put it anywhere, really. Uh, for instance, notes, and then log seek. And then in here, I'm just going to create a new folder just to show you. So this is a test. And I'm going to have this new one. And all I have to do is, in my case, presenter. Of course, things will look different in your computer but you just press enter and now it's going to prompt you to just accept that you can view the files. Again, this is not uh, logsig accessing your files or anything. It's just literally the browser because it's browser based uh, to just see your files. So it's pretty safe. Just view, view files and then save changes. And now you just have your new, um, your new project of, of logsig, like this is where your notes are. And if you see it and it just blew this, what happened to me, I just have to zoom up, like I just have to scroll up a little bit. I don't know why that happens, but in case you think it's blank, it's probably just, you, you just need to scroll a bit. Cool, so let me make that full screen. And now in here, we can just start write. You can write something in here and you can press tab. Let me actually turn on the, the keys just to show you. All right, there you go. So right now you should be able to see my keys in here. If I press tab, I can write something else. I can, you know, do grammar mistakes all over the place. There you go. <laughs> and if you're familiar with Rome, this is going to be practically identical. If you do shift, uh, sorry, not shift. Uh, if you do tap, you can indent. And if you do shift tap, you can go back and make one of these bigger headings where you can put things underneath it. All right. So yeah, basically we just made a mess. Now we can of course use the double bracket and in case you want to see the shortcuts, you can just click in there. Let me just put this here. And here you can see all the shortcuts similar in the way that Rome shows you the shortcuts. So yeah, this is really cool. There's tons of things there even has, it even has some like innovative things. For instance, if you make sure that you're not writing anywhere, your cursor is nowhere. So press escape for that. And now you press, if you go TR, you can toggle the right side pane. So things like that makes it really, really cool to you. So I really love those kind of shortcuts. So just to give you a quick overview, if we just create a new node, okay, now we present her and that is created, or we just focus somewhere else that is created, you can click on it. And now in here, you can do cool things you can similar to the way Rome works, let's just toggle this off like that. These are the backlinks. If you do the slash like this, you have access to more things. If you're used to Notion, it's very similar and you can write something like to do. And then you can write something like walk my dog. There you go. And now it's going to create this nice little checkbox. And this is kind of innovative, similar, uh, different to Rome. And you can put it to do. So you can check it, of course, like that. And all right, I just noticed something. So this is now and later, but I thought this would work in any page. Actually, if we just if we just move this to our journal, which is Al J, uh, the daily note in here, let's do it here because I think it, this might only work in here. I wanted to show you. So walk my dog. There you go. And now if you press this on. Yeah, there you go. So here you can see if you hover over it, you have doing or to do. And if you want to change this, you can go to settings. And I actually like now later. Yeah, that should do it. Let's see. Let's go back. All right, there I got it working. Uh, so I refreshed it, but also you might be able to just write later, for instance, if you wanted. And then here you can just write whatever to do. And there you go. So what's nice about this is that if you, let me just delete this one. If you just click on now, it's going to show you change from now to later. It creates this nice little toggle where it just 
uh, filters all the now. So let's just do another now uh, test log seek. There you go. And it's gonna it's gonna put all of these ones together. So if you check something off, it's no longer gonna be there. And you can change whatever symbol is this in this browser is not currently rendering it, but I guess that's fine. Not to go too deep into things, but I know that you can change that in settings. And here is a configuration file. Again, if this was looks daunting, let me close this. If this looks daunting to worry, you don't even have to touch this at first. But in this case, I just want to replace this for a nice little arrow. And now hopefully that should work. Let's go back. Let me just, there you go. Yeah, there we go. So now I just have a little arrow. It's mostly because I'm in Linux and probably that symbol wasn't being shown in here, but you know, that's just how you can change that symbol. But again, like that should probably require its own tutorial. You have other cool features such as mm, deadline, schedule, you can put a priorities and things. And yeah, it's really cool. You've got tons of things, date picker, here it is, link, which is really nice. Yeah, I, I invite you to explore all of these, they're amazing, here are the priorities. And yeah, tons of really cool stuff that you can do in here. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I want to make sure not to drag it out too long. So yeah, I mean, I'm really loving the layout of things. You can of course change the theme with some CSS in case you know that, but in general, it's amazing. I'm loving it so far. And yeah, keep in mind, it's still growing. It's still in development like most apps these days. Um, but yeah, this one, I think it has amazing potential and it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing if you give it a chance. In later videos, I would like to explore how you can combine this with your Markdown files because these are local files that you have in your computer. And yeah, we can explore more about that. So let me know if you got any questions in the comments, any requests to keep exploring Logsic. And yeah, hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.